Hello guys, I wanted to talk to you tonight about uh, the BBC uh, and their some recent policies that have been uh, announced, uh, and this is by their uh, <clears throat> their director Tim Davy. Uh, <clears throat> so, in an effort to uh, commit to impartiality, they've uh, they've they've uh, come up with a series of guidelines that are supposed to um, make sure that employees, and that includes all their journalists, uh, they say that they're banned from expressing opinions on matters of public policy, poli politics, or controversial subjects, uh, no matter how worthy the cause. Uh, <clears throat> so. And also, this new guidance bans employees from expressing personal opinions on uh, the current political debate. So, um, and then he also goes as far as, well, he, he warned staff not to bring the corporation under disre disrepute. Uh, so, you know, I understand not wanting to, or, you know, wanting to, prevent your employees from uh, speaking uh, badly about th their company or doing anything that damage the reputation of the company, but uh, to go as far as to tell them they're not allowed to express their personal opinion on any subject matter, I, I just don't understand. I don't understand how this... Uh, I mean, it's one thing if you're... Uh, Let's say you manage a, a a factory. Like I've worked in factory settings before, where they tell us that you're not allowed to say anything about uh, the company in in your uh, through social media, specifically Facebook. But when your company is uh, a, a news agency or a, you know broadcasting company, and you uh, and most of your employees are, are, are journalists. I just don't understand how you uh, how you operate without creative freedom and your ability to uh, express personal opinions on a variety of subject matters. And, you know, this is just uh, one more example of uh, now. Granted, this is in this is in England, uh, so I can't speak as uh, I can't speak as detailed or with it with I you know I don't have as much knowledge about free speech and employee rights and the general culture in England but from what I uh can gather uh, English society uh, has a lot in common with American society and uh the idea that well you know here in America free speech is uh very important, and that's why uh, companies like uh, Twitter have been getting a lot, of, uh, have been under a lot of hot water lately uh, for the, for uh, the way that they've been meddling in in free speech and the ability to share stories. Uh, and what's interestingly, uh, this story is um, well, this, this guideline that the BBC is is implementing. These new rules, uh, they mention Twitter specifically. Uh, they're primarily discussing uh, what you do on social media, but uh, more specifically, they're talking about Twitter. And um, so they go as far as to say that um, any any behavior that uh, any behavior that uh, breaks the rules on these new guidelines that's um, basically, your ability to speak openly on any subject matter whatsoever, uh, to express an opinion. If you express an opinion through social media, primarily Twitter, uh, you can get your you can have your Twitter account suspended by the BBC. Which I don't understand exactly what that means, because I don't know how the BBC can just shut down an employee's Twitter account uh, as Twitter is, in a, is an American company that uh, 
it's not, you know, they're a private ent entity. They're not part of the PBC. So I don't understand what that means exactly. But um, if, if there's a serious violation, they can also fire the employee for something like that. <clears throat> but I just don't understand. I mean, I know that the company wants to have their best... They they want to they they want their best interests uh, shared and they don't want anything to damage the company. But doesn't this kind of behavior kind of damage the company's reputation? I think it does. I think that a news uh, a, a a company a news company that says uh, that is well known and established as the BBC should um, should want the idea of of free and open dialogue. Free and open dialogue should be encouraged. It shouldn't be suppressed. Um, that's what separates us from the communists is is our ability to, you know, we we're supposed to be able to speak openly. And I again, I can't speak, um, I can't speak for England, but I know that, or at least I thought that we shared these values. So it just surprises me that um, the, these kind of policies are being implemented. Um, and then they targeted a specific employee, this guy, Gary Lineker, who was their highest paid, paid journalist, still is, and uh, he was, he was mentioned explicitly um, for, and they uh, over, they say that he's criticized the government and, and Brexit, um, the pulling out of the, Euro, the European Union, which I don't understand, I mean, uh, I guess it, it's it's definitely uh, it's not an impartial opinion. If that's controversial, that he's criticizing Brexit, I mean, what 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 other way you stand on it? Um, whether you think it's a mistake or not, you would hope that the journalists are speaking. Um, that you hire journalists because of their integrity and their ability to, uh, you know, they you 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 have to trust their moral compass to some extent. Uh, these journalists uh, should have the the best interests of their of their country and their people at heart, and they're not going to express. I mean, and this guy's the, their highest paid journalist, so he must uh, have some pretty good uh, stories under under his belt. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, it's just another example of the erosion of of uh, journalism in, in in free society. Uh, and you know it's it's uh, it's very disappointing because I uh, I use I use BBC as a news source regularly, and I hate to think that these people can't be open and honest because of some new social media policy. All right, well, thank you for your time, guys.